it's Temple Knight, and today we're going over the ultimate Matera slash anti Matera guide. And I'm going to teach you about zoning and how to deal with it in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. So, this ever happened to you? Yeah. Playing your favorite character, your favorite game, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, and Matera's just shooting you up and zoning you out, and you're like, what am I supposed to do with my life? Is it over? Is this it? Is zoning the best thing in the world? What should I do? Well, zoning is really cool, but if you're eating projectiles in your face all the time, you're gonna get frustrated. And if you don't understand the problem solving behind zoning or the concepts behind zoning, it can be like the worst thing to deal with in the world. You're waiting for the sweet release of death and it doesn't come, you know? So you feel like you're in the shadow realm, what do you do? But I'm especially gonna explain the concept behind zoning. So zoning to me is usually characters, we set up a big wall of projectiles and make it really hard for your opponent to get in. And usually the good thing about zoning is none of this has any hurt box. If your opponent has to like swing or something, right? You gotta hit one of the projectiles, they can't. They're just gonna get hit. That's why zoning is just like really fun to me. Shoot them up, make a wall, and make it difficult and frustrating for your opponent to approach. All right, so now you know that, keep people out, create a wall, not let people play. And the cool thing about zoners and the most frustrating thing about them is, you let the characters, when you fight like a rushdown character, like you fight another Grand or Percival, you'll be pressing buttons and a space to like hit your opponent, but zoners don't give you that chance to interact with them. The whole game plan is to slowly move farther back, back. <laughs> and Matera moves like, really fast, really far, she has these hops. She's really mobile, and she's really great at creating space. And being able to frustrate people like that. And that's why I love zoning characters especially. Zoning characters, set play characters, especially even top tier characters, they don't give you the illusion that you play. Like a zoner character will keep you out all day, a set play character is usually a style where they knock you down and do mix ups, so every time you wake up, you have to eat another mix up. So that's the style I like. All right, so Matera's normals. What's going on here? There's one stand light. This is a low, really far. Keeps your opponent away. No hurt box. Change it to itself up to three times. Really strong. Get over close. Someone tries to run at you. This is the tool you want to use. This is what you have to be wary of when Matera's. You know, when you're trying to keep people out or when you're trying to run into Matera. Next normal, crouch light. Okay. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, wow. Well, all right, look at that. It combos into her light arrow. Also, her EX arrow combos into all her arrows. Pretty good poke. Kind of just the band standard basic low. Stand medium, really big, like credit card swipe normal. Not really the best tool to use because it's kind of negative. So I can show you here. It's like negative on block edges. Let's see. Do -do -do. Frame advantage. Blocking all. So she's negative. But a close version is actually plus two. So you can do it if you yourself as a frame trap. Crouch medium. It's like slightly negative, not punishable. The 2C, arrow that shoots up. It's kind of anti-air, it's not air unblockable though. So if your opponent tries to jump. Not gonna hit him out the air. Her 1C, down back. Also not air unblockable, but she's kind of high. It could be good, good useful in some situations. The jump normal is pretty standard. The only thing special, the jump medium hits twice. Heavy hits once and is really deep. She has an air throw. All right, but why am I telling you about these normals? Why am I explaining these normals? Because I, I wanted to show you that not only in the projectiles, but in her normals, they're all meant to keep you away and to make it difficult to approach her. See what the slide is really good. 
that reaches really far. And good to catch people off guard who are trying to walk back or run up to her. And she has this trait. So all these tools that she has are all used to make it difficult for you to approach her. All right, so now that you understand the basics of our normals and the mindset behind our normals, what happens now, right? Well, the one normal I haven't gone over is far H. And this is Matera's best normal or most important normal besides her far stand line. Cause this is a low, it's really far, chain together multiple times. But this normal is a fireball. It has no hurt box. See from farther away, it leaves you plus. I'll change the stand heavy, it's all right, it's kind of a filler. But this normal right here, awesome, amazing, great, all day long. Stand light, negative. Why would you want to do that? This is far heavy, plus all day. So what are the pros of using this normal? It has long reach, like we were talking about earlier, no hurt box, so it doesn't interact with other normals. It's special cancelable in two her arrows. And it does clash with other projectiles. So I'm gonna do a recording of Grand. I'm gonna, see, I'm gonna counter on block and I'm gonna have him throw a fireball. And just so you know where this is, opponent, you can go to counter select settings. I'm gonna go to counter on hit. That'll probably be the easiest one to do. And scroll down to whatever this says, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure it's fireball. And he's blocking. So, uh, let me take him off a of block. Oh. So look at that. See that? Boom. Collides with the fireball. Are other arrows also do this? But I can't really think of any other normal in the game that actually is a projectile that interacts with fireballs. So this is great. So if you grand with just zoning, you say, hey, I want to set up my zoning too. You did it, you zone, there's no cooldown. That's pretty great. Now what are the cons of using this attack? It's kind of slow startup. You see, like I can't really just keep doing this all day. It's not really a great strategy. I'm not really getting anything. And it can't be canceled on whip. So here, what the situation you'll encounter most often when you're fighting with Terra is they'll be sitting there shooting arrows, right? And I'll be like, haha. But then boom. AJ collides, you don't get anything from it. But this thing just keep blocking all that, you can just keep shooting them, crushing them, being annoying. Summon up some other attacks, and then boom. Tip damage, frustrating your opponent, they're annoyed all day. So, special cancelable on hit, even when it hits really late. And if you try playing with Terror, you can actually say that. You can actually input the fireballs really early, and it'll still come out. But on whiff, you don't get anything. So what this is telling you is, the designers of the game want you to know that if you can make this attack whiff, the Matera gets nothing, and that's your time to counterattack. So this attack, as you can see, it doesn't do any chip, even though it is a projectile, so that's really not too great. If it doesn't do any chip, can be rolled, and it loses the EX projectiles. The first time I'm gonna show you this EX projectile part. So we're gonna go down to counter attack settings. Where do you have him blocking? So on block, he's gonna do EX fireball. And see that situation? Boom, got hit. A little bit closer, I can't block it. Probably a little bit farther away. I could probably still shoot him again and block. But I just lost that. I'm trying to zone him. Because that arrow was nullified, I can't keep canceling forward. So if you have a character like Grand or Catalina or somebody like Lancelot, we do EX Fireball. If it hits my arrow shot, I can't keep canceling any more arrows. 
So the sun gives the node to nullify the error of it. it. Connects with the projectile, and you do an extra projectile as a read. Then they have to stop. Now, what can I do about this? I can do an EX Fireball. Now, inside this game, you'll see that for the EX Fireball, the last hit of it will trade. And this is actually disadvantageous to, Amer to Matera. And I'll say why. Even though both characters get knocked down, you're in a situation where Matera wants to be active to be up. If both characters are knocked down, you're knocked down, she's knocked down, you're Let's in a better see. position because you get to get up, run up, apply pressure, and then I have to find out, oh, now I have to find a way to be defensive the last minute while you're already approaching. So, zoners usually never, ever, ever want to be knocked down. And even though this positioning is actually the same, it's still a material disadvantage because she can't set up her game. She has to be preemptive with her game where other people just kind of run in and try to attack her. So what we're saying. Does not do any chips. No hurt box. It does do pretty decent damage. But it can be rolled. So, rolling. We're gonna go to counter attack settings. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to be able to like try to set this up yourself. Because it's important to practice these things to understand how to avoid the situations. And this game doesn't even let you do that. Alright. Does it? Yeah, it does. Backdashing, crossover. That's it. Yeah. So what's happening here? Grant is blocking the first hit of the arrow and then rolling forward. And you see both hits of the arrow with. And in this situation, Matera actually is like, like everywhere she's even. Here she's plus. But Grant can slowly use this to get in. So you can block the arrow, then they're gonna cancel. Keep moving forward. And you see, the CP is doing it at the same speed and it's working against all of Matera's arrows. So this is a really strong technique. The other one is spot dodge. Because the one thing you think about this, if you try to roll, And I don't do an arrow throw. I can punish you for it. So if, you, if somebody isn't automatically just gonna keep spamming arrows all day, you kind of just be like, all right, that's a read. That's a risk you gotta take. So running it like that can be a risk. So what can you do about it? All right, dodge. Because they're not moving forward, it doesn't have the same risk. And if they want to stay and shoot it all day, you can block first arrow and dodge. And if they don't, you can say, all right, well, Matera is gaining meter. But what you're doing is pitting her arrows on a pretty long cooldown. So because of this, Matera will be like, oh no, default fall down. See how long it takes for the arrow to come back. See how long it is? That pull down is so long. And now Matera loses access to it. And she has to use our other arrow to try to keep the pace. So when you dodge the arrows, instead of blocking it, you make it so that Matera has to wait forever to get the arrows back. Same thing for this arrow. If you whip, make them with the H arrow too, I can't cancel. So you have to keep these concepts in mind where, okay, what tools does Matera have right now? How do I make her use her arrows so that way she has less tools to use for continuing to zone? And then we get a lot to think of at first because you realize at this point, what you're doing is not only managing your resources and your special moves, but you have to manage your opponent's resources and your opponent's special moves. And really, 
this is important to do in every single matchup, but especially with zoners, they kind of force you to do it. Because if you don't, you'll be making decisions trying to get in, but if you're not realizing what options they have, you're kind of just going to end up running into stuff. All right, so. First, next we're gonna go over her high arrow shot. So what's great about this move? It does chip damage. And again, it's a projectile, so it has no hurt box. It does decent damage that adds up after like a wave of zoning. So I'm gonna take them off of a cooldown. Actually not cooldown, uh, auto recovery for health. I'm gonna just kind of take that off too. Doesn't block. Actually, no. Leave him on block. I'm gonna make both of these none. So, this is what like a regular zone situation looks like. Just shooting people. All day with all your different attacks, and slowly the chip add up. And if you see, I'm gonna restart this here, push him into the corner. The situation where Matera is just blocking all day. Oh, well, Matera has you blocking all day. Look how much meter she gains. It's not just a chip. The meter advantage that she'll eventually get is what's really gonna put you in a hole because so you get access to her super. One being the anti air super, which I'll we'll go over later, and one being the super sky brown, I was like the big air super. So the chip adds up. But the most important thing about the high butterfly is that it's primarily used to detonate. But the high arrow shot is that it's primarily used to benefit butterflies. And butterflies are really great because they're great tools for resetting pressure. The heavy arrow does already does, cool down and come back. There we go. The heavy arrow also does. Now, the one that usually does it is the low shot. And the reason why the low shot doesn't do it is because where are we at? Counter. Hatch, blocker. Is because the low shot is usually used for zoning, but not detonating the arrows. So if you want to detonate the arrows, you do the high shot. If you don't want to detonate the arrows, you use the low shot. High shot detonate, low shot not detonate until they get lower. So usually that's what's uh, happening right there. The butterfly patterns change depending on what butterflies on the screen. For the regular ones, it's pretty regular. They just go forward. The light one goes really slow. Heavy one goes really fast. And you can kind of keep putting it back on the screen. Except for the EX that has a cooldown that lasts a pretty long time. All right, so the high arrow shot, again, great for detonating butterflies. The one problem with it though, is that it is Crouchable. So we're gonna hit the opponent to crouch. And you see that the opponent can kind of just sit there and crouch out of the way. And if it whiffs, you see it takes a long time for it to come back. So you have to use your little arrow shot. So, low arrow shot. What's so great about this move? What is it used for? Again, it does chip. And no hurt box, decent damage, great chip tool. So you can keep using it at the wave and wave. And it's not avoidable by crouching. The one problem it kind of has is that if somebody's jumping, it's probably less likely to catch somebody that's jumping because usually if somebody's jumping in at you, it might be kind of annoying to be like, ah. Well, it's kind of annoying because 
since it hits so low, it's the less likely to catch somebody jumping. Most of the time, people aren't going to be jumping at you from farther away, but it's just another little problem it has. And you usually don't have to worry about setting up butterflies. So if you want to control space, you can either set up butterflies, and when the butterfly overlaps with the opponent, then you can detonate it and make it explode. This is great for a lot of setups. You can jump in and be... Not use a butterfly. Do use the butterfly. So what are the cons of Matera's low shot? Well, if it whiffs, it takes a while and for it to come out. So if you block, you get it really quickly. And I'm gonna set them to dodge again. See how long it takes the last meter to build up. It takes a long time for it to come out. And usually, again, with the light and medium, you can't do any butterflies with it. That kind of sucks. So if you're, say if like, you see something we're applying pressure with Matera, right? You just keep on pressure. You don't have the EX arrow because you already used it for the high. And you had the low, you have a butterfly out. You can't really use it with the low arrow shot. You still can use the 2C or let's say 1C or 2C or let's see if I get this right. The upshot of the arrow. But those don't move horizontally. They all move kind of vertically. So if somebody's jumping, it'd be a better idea to use those tools. But if not, it's gonna be kind of hard to utilize. By the way, all this is also air blockable. So one thing you can do with this, however, is when they're landing, you can just smack them into normal. That'll be unblockable. But farther away, you know, not really the best option. So next we're going over her arrow range. What's good about this move? Yeah, decent amount of chip. Air unblockable. So for the arrow that goes up, I see right now I got on a block. Okay, do I have a block? Yeah. Block. There we go. The rain itself is blockable, but the arrow that goes up is air unblockable. So arrow, blockable, unblockable, rain is blockable. Even though for some reason not blocking all the time, I don't know if you want my air. Yep. Rain, blockable. This is really great for controlling specific space on the screen. This is the light. Light. Medium. And the X. So they're great because if you have like a really hard read that the phone is gonna jump, it can anti-air and be unblockable. If not, it'll just kind of just rain on the screen. And you see this one has like a lot shorter cooldown. This is the uh, Regular input. The easy inputs are like way slower. Like if you're feeling like 20 frames and then 200 frames. It's really 10 times as slow. So what's the problem with this move? What's bad about this move? So it's actually easily reactable. So if your opponent has a read and they try to react to it, let's say you set up a situation. I'm gonna set them up to a block. And on block, is going to boot. Make sure it's this one. Yeah, so Boots is great at stopping this game. Any move that moves really far forward. So Catalina's like, her protocol backwards, she does a big stab. 
the Diva Super, where she does like the Lariat. You can also use her regular Lariat. You can use Lancelot Super or his dash attack. Any attack that moves really horizontally fast, any horizontal special moves, to hit this. Also, like Charlotta's roll, like uh, Lelaine's B Rekka. They're all great at catching this move. So it's reactable, and it's kind of slow and small. It's not really a great, like, reliable anti air. Booted. Again, if they're just gonna be like really easily standing in the same place, it'll be great. But if not, and if you're off even by a little bit, it can really dispel disaster for you. All right, so lastly, we're gonna go over butterflies. What's so great about butterflies? Butterflies, they can be detonated in a very variety of ways. Where they went over heavy. There we go. One C. Two C. The low shot. The anti air shot. Uh, I'm not forgetting anything. I'll show you about it. Shoot. Shoot him up. And for the low shot, it can't be used until the butterflies kind of lo go lower and overlap with it. So usually, it's only the. Oh god, I'm going off with this. All right, one more time. Yeah, you can only use the high shot for the light and medium versions, and the two C and the one C. But for the EX, when it goes lower, you can use a low shot as well. So, butterflies. Really high damage. We'll go over that in a minute, but first, it protects you vertically. Big ol' vertical explosion that does a ton, a ton of damage. And also covers that vertical space, up and down. Arrows left and right. Butterfly. Vertical space Let's up and down. And it can lead to really, really high damage. Just wanna take them off a block all. Oh. Drops. See, so even drop that combo did like 50% damage. The butterflies, really, really high damage. If you need to go for a reset right there. Perfect. It died. So butterflies like lead to huge damage. And if you wanted to, if you did drop the combo, call it a reset. So yeah, butterflies can lead to insane damage and insane pressure. Because even in a scenario where this is all blocked, right? Block all. Yeah, it's gonna block all. I don't know what's going on. Counter hat. Um, I guess this game is just nutty. Block switching. There we go. Butterflies are still super annoying. Go once it's hit, and they allow you to go for mix up. So there's like a variety of different setups you can do with butterflies. To try to open up your opponent's defense. Now, what are the problems with butterflies? Well, they're actually pretty OD. So. There isn't really too many things wrong with them. It used to be kind of annoying because they can mess up some of the combo. So let's say if hmm, do this. block off. So EX arrow, you use that one. You have a butterfly out. And you're like, all right. Well, I don't know. Because the damn dump of this isn't as high as I usually get. Or it could be like, Yeesh. I 
trying to scale on my combo way earlier than I wanted to. Or it could be something like... It put them at a really weird angle, but they were way higher than I wanted them to be. So you have to learn a lot of conversions, and sometimes the best hit to get the conversion can make the butterflies explode and put you in like a really difficult situation where you don't really want to be in. But most of the time, butterflies are amazing. Alright, so that was like a lot of information to go over, right? We went over all these special moves in a lot of different contexts. So, what now? What about actual Matera patterns that you have to deal with mid-match? So I'm gonna set up a few scenarios, and I'm gonna go over those and see what's the best way to for you to avoid them. Alright, so the first pattern we're gonna go over is Matera doing far C in a low shot or high shot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll forward. Block for an arrow, roll forward. Block for an arrow, roll forward. In which situation, you're actually not getting a punish. What you're doing, you're slowly moving closer and creating space where you visually recognize that the heavy arrow hit. And you're saying to yourself, okay, I believe they're gonna do uh, the arrow shot. And then you roll forward. Also, you can spot dodge. But that's the wrong time, you will get hit. But, great tool. Now, if you're farther out, Again, Matera can't really make the shot. So if you see her with, you can kind of run in. And you can see, you actually gain a lot of space, even though you ate it with your face later. But this time we're going to do that again, but we're going to roll when we get close. So wait for the whiff, and roll. Now, what you have to know here is you have to know, okay, that Matera, I think they're going to do that heavy again. Just because they really like using that button. Right, it's a really strong tool. You're gonna see it all the time. But also what you're deciding is that once you get in close, Matera is gonna have to make a decision. So she said light kick and bait you, you could roll, but it's a guessing game you have to make. Another decision you can make in a situation is you see him just throwing out lights, just it's fireball. And why are you, why are you doing the ace fireball? Alright, just gonna cool down. Because you're, you know that if they want to do the fireball, so you get a knockout in this situation. And then you can go fire pressure. Matera doesn't have any reversals, except for their super. And I can make another video about this, but all supers in this game can be baited with that wake up light. I think Dragon will also be stand light as an OS and it'll, uh, Basically, beat all reversal supers in the game. So, and usually they have reversal anyway, so you get basically free pressure. So you knock her down. You know, do whatever you want. Big boy damage. Yay! I'll do what you do. If you're getting in, I don't know what to do. Draw super! It's a read, it's a guess. But trust me, whether the super hits her or not isn't really the point in this situation. Once you see that your opponent, once your opponent sees that you're willing to make difficult decisions and have different answers for how you want to approach, it's going to make them hesitant to repeat the same patterns. Because if the situation didn't work out, they can see, oh, I can see how this person can adjust to my game plan. So I should make different decisions when I'm putting up fireballs. All right, so for this, the next pattern is going to be Matera alternating between the high shots and her low shots for her fireball. Now, you notice, if I'm just sitting here getting hit, right? She's just shooting me out. And look what happens when I die. You look like she's getting medium. What you do in that situation is, if somebody just keeps throwing out fireballs, one after the other, one after the other, if you make them whiff the fireball and they're just doing it kind of mindlessly, right? Without real intention, you create an opening 
where they whip a normal and you can visually react to them whipping a normal. Notice there's no projectile on the screen and then start to run forward. Now, a lot of times what will happen is they'll just try to run forward, right? They'll kind of run into stuff. Even a scenario where, okay, they didn't whip a normal. Maybe they realized that they would see if they hit or block or not. Well, in this game, you can actually cancel your run forward into the roll or into the spot dodge. So if you're running, and you see what's going on screen. You see a hotter position at fireball when you're making a read based on the pattern from up close. You can actually cancel your run into the roll of spot dodge. This is going to be the most important tool you're going to have against dealing with these fireballs. Because if not, you just have to block all day. Now, sometimes certain spacings, especially from farther away, it's a lot easier to make these rolls into a read or like a reaction. Sometimes they're going to have to be a read. Sometimes they can be a reaction. But running into roll or running in a spot dodge is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely important to making Matero with fireballs and getting it close. Now for the pattern we're going to go over here, it's going to be far C and the arrow rain. And this pattern could be especially infuriating because it's still like really it's difficult to really get anywhere out of it. So you'll try to like block and be like, what's going on? Try to roll, try to get hit. Try to spot dodge, it can be super frustrating. The easiest thing to do is most characters, Gran, Charlotta, Catalina, Lediva, Lancelot, Percival, they all have a special attack that moves really forward, far, really fast, or like Matera takes like a slide, maybe a slide might be too slow. But once you block the arrow, but <laughs> and the risk for this being wrong is pretty, pretty not that, it's not that bad. Because what'll happen is if you try to boot after you block the after rain, she'll get hit. Because once you block the rain, she'll be plus. So the time you want to interrupt this again. After you block the X arrow. That's other things. You got super. We need to try that out. You also spot that. And because the far C arrow is doing any chip, and you're spot dodging, you should be relatively fine. And even me rolling earlier, not really punishable. But the best answer, four move, special move, throw it out if you see the acid rain. It's not any anyway. Like the risk usually isn't that high, and you get out the corner, you get a knockdown, and you get a set of flying pressure. The one thing we talked about earlier was Matera's super high damage from a butterfly. Look at the scenario right here. Five feet harder, so it's not really a mix up. It's just a mid to but one throw and the two conversions and you already died before the second one's already over. So in the corner, the chair can only do this off the throw and slide, but the pressure is actually surprisingly good once it butterflies up. There's a block like a onslaught of attack. Butterfly super plus. And if you get opened up, you will eat a ton of damage. So usually, what, what can you do in a situation, right? What can you do when Ms. Terra actually decides, you know what, I'm gonna knock you down and I'm gonna pressure you. The ace reversal, usually a bit. If you don't have that, rolling spot dodge in a situation, usually a pretty bad idea, especially if you deal with a meaty JC, because It'll, first of all, it's really plus. And then secondly, it'll put you into a scenario where, okay, you did get out, 
Like, you didn't really stop us from doing anything. And then you're holding all the things up. Spell blocking and spell blocking. So if you have a DP or a super you can do, definitely recommend it. Other than that, you're just gonna have to block. Sometimes you have to block in life, it's okay. You'll get through it. It's not the worst thing ever. All right, so we went over normal, we went over projectiles, we went over different patterns. Now we're gonna go over it these two So we've done over the camera, and we're gonna get close, and they decide, hey, I'm tired of playing this grill game with you. I wanna jump. Well, what's gonna happen? So, we're gonna set the opponent up to jump. And we're gonna set them to, we're gonna set them to jump and probably jump you because it's like a like ridiculously, ridiculously good jump button. So. I'm set on the block afterwards, so. And I'm gonna be blocking low. We're gonna save that. So, 1C anti air. Pretty good. You get Miss Green loot off of it. So it's a good anti air. But one thing to know about this normal is that. Unlike all other air attacks, the other all the other two C's in the game, this normal is air blockable. So your opponent can just guard it. If you have like a butterfly set up or something, you can be like, okay, now I can do unblockable normals. But for the most part, it's gonna be jumping at you. So if a person is jumping at you and they're doing Attack. You can punish them, go for an OP, go for setup, you know, whatever. But if they're just jumping, you can't really stop it. So, what can you do about this? Anti air normal. Far medium is pretty good at this. Kind of questionable because of the proximity normals, you might not always get it. And heavy. Works kind of as anti air. Your best bet, in my opinion, is to go for air throw. But for Matera for defense, that means that if she thinks someone's gonna jump, yeah. She can shoot you all she wants. But they don't have a super big hitbox. And the worst case scenario is you jump, you don't get counter hit, and then she tries to apply pressure afterwards. Or starts zoning and starts shooting arrows. So really, all in all, not that bad. So one thing that kind of switches it in her favor is she start using her super. So normal, air to air, air blockable, normals, air unblockable, and say they this This is a great advantage Somebody jumping in, and whether they block or didn't block or whatever they were trying to do. Either way, they got hit. Why this is great? Because shallow damage, shallow reversal. You don't have to guess as much in the situation. You can just, hey, they jumped at me, I'm reversal super, and that's your answer. So if people start jumping a lot, this is your go-to move. This is exactly what you want to look out for. And testing the Matera player, seeing how good their reactions are, and seeing what anti airs they'll use. Make your life a whole lot easier and give you way more options and as well. So, 2C, 1C, 2C, air throw, sometimes proximity normals, mainly. I think later in the middle of this game. Jump up air throw is going to be a lot more important. People aren't doing it right now, but eventually, I think this is going to be the good thing. You can also air throw the quarterback. 
to get any position you want. I mean, you know, pretty high priority. So that's something to look out for for the future. Alright, so we're gonna go over Matera's Super Skybound art. Our Super Skybound art is just amazing, amazing rain of air. So far away, there's a pretty good amount of tip. Close up. Oops. Still pretty good amount of tip. But, what the difference it'll do is when they're farther away, when it's farther away, they kind of get shot up by the arrows. And it'll do a good chunk of damage. When they're closer, it'll do still a lot of shots of the arrows and then this whole pitch thing. And the one good use of the super from the terror is that if somebody's like almost dead and it's like, all right, they got a little bit of health left. I'll say 2%. <laughs> more like, more or less doing something really like. Twenty five. Yeah, so twenty four percent will probably kill. So if they're like throwing a like, yeah, fireball or caught a door or something. 24% damage, boom, you want. What about chip, right? Because most likely you're not gonna get this one hit. It'll probably be a chip scenario from really far away. So it's gonna have to punch the block. And again, pretty good chip. The problem in this game is that even if they're at 2%, it won't kill them. It'll just put them at a pixel. And the reason for that is that this game has like basically a magic pixel, and that basically means that it had to be down to one percent, and once they're down to one percent, then they can finally be chipped. So now they're down to zero after that one, and now they can die. Yeah. So we put it to pull down. Oh, I think the actually, uh, so you can take it off of auto. Put it on none. There we go. So now, once they have, it's basically invisible one person chip that they can do. So two percent. Still eleven. Match pixel. Down. So that's pretty much all I'm gonna be using it for, other than just hit confirms. Usually, I use it in combos when I need to do like a whole lot of damage, or when I know like I want to just I don't really need the meter, so I want to just do whatever combo I can. So I usually do whatever. And then I ended in this for like, hey, I need a big chunk of damage. Usually, it's gonna like, it'll either almost kill or about to kill. And the reason why you don't want to use it in other situations is because if it's not gonna kill. Still for butterfly, I You shoot him up, do butterflies, it'll be a much better setup than going for the super. So if you can kill, use the super. If not, just go for butterfly over. Okay. All right, and that's been everything I have with Matera. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, let me know. For the most part, I'm having like a lot of fun with this character. This game's pretty wild, so for me, like some of these matches are kind of uh. But playing Matera, playing against Matera. It's really important to understand what she's doing, what her goals are, and how she opposes neutral and matchup. And if you're having trouble fighting Matera, I definitely a hundred, a thousand percent recommend playing her. Because once you start playing her, understanding the character, you'll understand her weaknesses, her strengths, and something that you can do better in a matchup that is so difficult to understand in any other scenario. It's like literally walking in somebody else's shoes. Like in real life, that metaphor doesn't make sense. In fighting games, you can just do it perfectly 
to the highest like, ability that you have and Bulls actually and understand. Yoga. And that'll help you grow so much more than just fighting with terrors and being like, I don't know what to do. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy your day and make it sway. If this content helped you in any way, definitely leave a like, leave a comment, sub. It really helps me out. And let me know what you want to see next. You know, this is kind of like a quick and dirty video, but I really feel like for this type of content, it really helps to explain everything out. I could have did like something more edited, but I really wanted to to sit down and say, hey, it ain't going to be that easy. There aren't a lot of shortcuts, and I feel like this better works out a lot better when it's explained thoroughly. All right. Later.